It was mid-June in 1932 when a group of friends decided to go on a beach vacation and fishing trip for recreation and fun. Donnie, Adam, and Lucy had been best friends since high school. They shared everything, secrets, dreams, fears, and hobbies. They had gone through many ups and downs together, supporting each other and having fun. They had just graduated from college and they knew their lives were about to change. They had different career paths and would soon move to different cities. They wanted to make the most of their remaining time together, so they decided to go on a vacation before they parted ways. They chose Jacksonville Beach, Florida as their destination, a coastal gem nestled along Florida's Atlantic coast with a unique allure beyond sun-drenched sands and inviting waves. Here, the magnificent dance between land and sea takes on an exhilarating twist, for in these waters roam the awe-inspiring rulers of the deep, the great white sharks. The trio had always loved the ocean and wanted to enjoy the sun, the sand, and the waves. They booked a hotel near the beach and planned to spend three days there. They packed their bags, grabbed their passports, and boarded a plane. The first two days of their vacation were amazing. They swam in the clear water, played volleyball on the shore, ate delicious seafood, and watched the sunset. They laughed, joked, reminisced, and took pictures. They felt like they were kids again, carefree and happy. They didn't want their vacation to end. On the third day, they decided to do something different. They wanted to have an adventure, something they would never forget. They rented a boat from a local fisherman and bought some fishing gear. They wanted to go fishing off the coast and see what they could catch. They thought it would be fun and exciting. They boarded the boat early in the morning and set off. The weather was perfect, breezy and warm. The water was calm and blue. They felt a rush of adrenaline as they sailed away from the shore. They felt like explorers ready to discover new things. They reached a spot where the fishermen had told them it was suitable for fishing. They anchored the boat and prepared their rods and baits. They cast their lines into the water and waited patiently. They hoped to catch something big and impressive. They didn't have to wait long. After a few minutes, Donnie felt a tug on his line. He smiled and shouted to his friends that he had a bite. He started to reel in his catch, feeling its weight and strength. He wondered what it was. Adam and Lucy cheered him on, excited to see his catch. They grabbed their cameras and got ready to take pictures. They thought it might be a tuna, a swordfish, or a marlin. They were wrong. As Donnie pulled his line closer to the boat, they saw a flash of gray and white in the water. A huge fin emerged from the surface, followed by a massive body covered with scars and teeth. It was a great white shark, at least 17 feet long. Donnie gasped in horror as he realized what he had hooked. He tried to let go of his rod, but it was too late. The shark jerked its head and pulled Donnie off his feet. He flew over the railing and landed in the water with a splash. Adam and Lucy screamed in shock and fear. They watched helplessly as their friend struggled to swim back to the boat. The shark circled him, ready to attack. Donnie cried out for help, but his voice was drowned by the sound of his own heartbeat. Adam grabbed a knife from the boat and ran to the edge. He wanted to help his friend, but he didn't know how. He was too far away, and the shark was too fast. He hesitated, unsure what to do. Lucy grabbed a flare gun from the boat and aimed it at the shark. She wanted to scare it away or at least distract it. She pulled the trigger, hoping for a miracle. The flare shot out of the gun and flew toward the shark. It missed by inches and hit the water instead. It fizzled and died, creating a small splash. The shark ignored the flare and focused on its prey. It opened its mouth wide, revealing rows of razor-sharp teeth. It bit down Donnie's leg with over 4,000 pounds per square inch force, enough to crush a car. It ripped off his leg with a loud crunch, severing his bones, muscles, and nerves. Donnie screamed in agony, piercing the air and echoing in his friend's ears. Blood gushed from his wound like a fountain, staining the water red. He felt a surge of pain that overwhelmed his senses. He went into shock and lost consciousness, his eyes rolling back in his head. He was still alive, but barely. He would not survive for long. Adam and Lucy watched in horror as the shark devoured their friend. They saw the shark tear off chunks of flesh from his body, leaving behind a bloody mess of bones and organs. They heard his muffled screams and gurgles fading into silence. They felt a surge of grief, guilt, and anger. They had lost their best friend in a matter of seconds. They had failed to save him. They had let him die. They felt a knot in their stomachs and a lump in their throats. They felt sick and numb. They felt like they had died too. They also felt a surge of fear. They realized they were still in danger. The shark was still hungry and they were still in its territory. They had to get out of there before it came for them. 
Adam snapped out of his trauma-induced trance and grabbed the wheel. He started the engine and turned the boat around. He wanted to get back to shore as fast as possible. He didn't care about anything else. Lucy clung to him, sobbing uncontrollably. She couldn't believe what had happened. She couldn't accept that Donnie was gone. She wished it was all a nightmare. They sped away from the scene, leaving behind blood and tears. They never looked back. They had gone fishing for fun and excitement, but found horror and tragedy. Catherine McBride, affectionately called Kathy by those close to her, was a driven and dedicated 40-year-old businesswoman in Orlando, Florida. As the owner of her own business, she poured her heart and soul into its success, often leaving her with limited time to spend with her beloved husband, Scott. The demanding nature of her work weighed heavily on Kathy as she yearned for more moments of togetherness and intimacy with her life partner. Approaching their 10th wedding anniversary, Kathy decided it was time to address this imbalance and celebrate their milestone extraordinarily. She pondered various options to create the perfect surprise for Scott, one that would express her love and provide an opportunity to rejuvenate their bond and create lasting memories. Knowing that she and Scott were passionate surfers with a shared history of love and connection through the waves, Kathy settled on a dreamy destination, Maui, Hawaii. Arriving in Maui, they found themselves in a paradise many couples chose for their honeymoons. The beautiful beaches and the romantic atmosphere made it a perfect destination for celebrating their special day. They engaged in various activities throughout their trip, such as snorkeling, kayaking, and enjoying the vibrant nightlife. On the final day of their magical vacation in Maui, Kathy and Scott embarked on a surfing adventure, a fitting tribute to their love story that originated in the waves of another far-off land. With excitement and nostalgia in their hearts, they paddled out into the sparkling azure waters, eager to reconnect with the sport that had brought them together 15 years ago during that unforgettable summer in Australia. With the surf subsiding, Kathy and Scott decided to take a well-deserved rest from the adrenaline-pumping rides. They lay down on their surfboards, stomachs pressed against the cool surfboard, hands dangling in the water, and legs gently kicking to maintain balance. The ocean cradled them gently, creating a soothing lullaby of water lapping against their boards. In this tranquil interlude, surrounded by the beauty of nature and the vast expanse of the ocean, they found a sense of peace and unity. Time seemed to stand still as they absorbed the magnificence of the moment, grateful for each other's presence and the unyielding love that had brought them to this point. As they lay there, their eyes occasionally met, communicating emotions transcending spoken language. Gratitude, love, and the joy of shared experiences intertwined in their gaze, forging a stronger bond with time. Amid what should have been a serene and blissful moment, the atmosphere abruptly shifted as a gut-wrenching scream shattered the tranquility. Kathy's joyful laughter transformed into a cry of terror as an unseen and malevolent force pulled her legs out from under her, sending her tumbling into the water. The idyllic scene became a nightmare as Scott turned in horror to witness a horrifying sight. A massive 14-foot tiger shark viciously clamped onto Kathy's delicate limb. Despite the excruciating pain and overwhelming disorientation, Kathy's unyielding grip on her surfboard became her lifeline in the harrowing struggle. Amidst the terrifying force of the tiger shark's attack, Kathy's determination and survival instincts kicked into high gear, refusing to let go and allowing the predator to drag her beneath the surface. However, the shark was unwilling to let its prey escape so easily. With a frenzy of motion, it thrashed its massive head from side to side, treating Kathy's body as if she were nothing more than a helpless rag doll caught in its deadly game. As the struggle intensified, the water surrounding them transformed into a haunting scene. Kathy's blood mingled with the salt water. The scene was both horrifying and surreal, with the once peaceful ocean now reflecting the brutal reality of nature's raw power. Each movement of the shark sent new waves of searing agony through Kathy's body, but she clung to every ounce of strength she could muster. Bearing witness to the frenzied assault, with an unwavering determination to rescue his beloved wife, Scott wasted no time. He fearlessly plunged into the water, closing the distance between himself and the immense shark. Though he couldn't help but feel dwarfed in the presence of the formidable predator, he refused to let fear hold him back. Thinking quickly, he grasped the shark's sensitive gills, causing the creature to recoil, 
momentarily stunned by the unexpected attack. Scott's instincts kicked in, desperately trying to free Kathy from the relentless jaws. He clawed at the shark's eyes fiercely, inflicting a sharp and forceful assault that made the predator loosen its grip on Kathy's leg for a fleeting moment. Taking advantage of the respite, Kathy mustered all her strength and pulled her leg away from the deadly maw of the shark, feeling her flesh tear as she did so. Despite the pain and stinging salt water in her wounds, she returned to her surfboard, using it as her lifeline. Scott continued his courageous battle, delivering a powerful kick to the shark's snout. Feeling the reverberations through his body, he managed to pull away from the disoriented predator. Without hesitation, Scott remained composed and acted swiftly. He quickly mounted his surfboard, grasped hold of Kathy's board, and propelled himself towards the safety of the shore with every ounce of strength in his body. In his determination to save both their lives, Scott did not waste a moment looking back to see if the shark was still pursuing them. His singular focus was paddling as fast as possible, knowing their survival depended on reaching dry land as quickly as possible. The journey to safety felt like an agonizing eternity, the seconds stretching into what seemed like endless minutes. But Scott's determination and relentless paddling paid off. Eventually, with a wave of relief, the couple finally reached the welcoming embrace of the beach, leaving the treacherous waters and the threat of the shark behind them. Amidst the commotion, a group of people gathered around to see what had happened. Witnessing Kathy's gruesome injuries, they immediately called for an ambulance. The medical personnel arrived quickly and rushed Kathy to the nearest hospital, where she underwent wound treatment. Unfortunately, her injuries were severe, and her leg had to be amputated. It took three weeks for Kathy to recover fully. Back in Orlando, Kathy and Scott had a newfound appreciation for life and a deeper bond of trust knowing they were willing to risk everything to save each other. Nine months later, Kathy gave birth to a healthy baby boy whom they named Maui in honor of the beautiful place where their lives had changed forever. Natalie McDaniel loved the water. Ever since childhood, she's enjoyed swimming, surfing, and snorkeling. She felt a connection with the ocean, a sense of freedom and wonder. She dreamed of becoming a marine biologist one day, exploring the mysteries of the deep. That's why she was so excited when her parents surprised her with a vacation to the Gold Coast, Australia. They had booked a beachfront hotel in Surfer's Paradise, a popular tourist destination in the country. Natalie couldn't wait to hit the waves and soak up the sun. She packed her swimsuit, sunscreen, sunglasses, and a waterproof camera. She wanted to capture every moment of her adventure. She also brought her lucky shark tooth necklace, a gift from her grandfather, a sailor. He had told her stories of his encounters with sharks and how they were misunderstood creatures that deserved respect and admiration. Natalie believed him. She had read books and watched documentaries about sharks and learned that they were not mindless killers but intelligent and curious animals that played an essential role in the ecosystem. She hoped to see one in person someday, from a safe distance. She arrived at the hotel with her parents, Nick and Allie, on a sunny Saturday morning. They checked in and dropped their bags in their room with a balcony overlooking the beach. Natalie ran to the railing and gasped at the sight of the sparkling blue water and the white sand. She could hear the sound of the waves crashing and the seagulls squawking. She turned to her parents and pleaded with them to let her go for a swim. They agreed but reminded her to be careful and stay close to the shore. They also told her to wear her life jacket, which she hated but obliged. They said they would join her after unpacking and relaxing a bit. Natalie grabbed her camera and ran down to the beach. She felt the warm sand under her feet and the breeze on her face. She smiled as she saw other people enjoying themselves, playing volleyball, building sandcastles, or lying on towels. She reached the water's edge and dipped her toes in. It was cool and refreshing. She put on her life jacket and waded deeper into the water. She felt a surge of adrenaline as she dove under a wave and emerged on the other side. She laughed as she splashed around, feeling like a kid again. She looked back at the shore and saw her parents waving at her from their balcony. She waved back and blew them a kiss. She decided to swim a little further out, with fewer people and more space. She loved being surrounded by water as if she were in another world. She looked down and saw a fish darting around her feet. She wished she had brought her snorkel gear, but decided to use her camera instead. She turned it on and snapped some pictures of the underwater scenery. She saw colorful corals, starfish, sea urchins, and anemones. She also saw a stingray glide by. 
followed by a school of silverfish. She was amazed by the diversity of life in the ocean. She swam on, looking for more things to photograph. She didn't notice how far she had gone from the shore or how long she had been in the water. She was too absorbed in her exploration. She didn't notice the dark shape lurking below her, watching her every move. It was a great white shark, one of the largest predators in the ocean. It had been patrolling the area for food, attracted by the smell of blood from a wounded seal that had escaped its jaws earlier. It had followed the seal's trail to the beach, where it sensed another prey source. It saw Natalie's silhouette in contrast against the blue water. It mistook it for another seal, or perhaps a turtle. It didn't care what it was exactly as long as it was edible. It moved closer to investigate, staying hidden in the shadows. Natalie felt something brush against her leg. She thought it was a piece of seaweed or a plastic bag. She kicked it away and continued swimming. She didn't see the shark circle around behind her, preparing for an attack. She didn't hear its powerful tail propel it forward with incredible speed. She didn't feel its razor-sharp teeth sink into her flesh until it was too late. She screamed as she felt a sudden jolt of pain in her lower body. She looked down and saw blood gushing out of her wound. She saw half of her left mangled leg missing from below the knee. She realized what had happened. She had been bitten by a shark. She panicked as she felt another tug on her leg. The shark had not let go. It was shaking its head from side to side, tearing more flesh and bone from her limb. She tried to fight back, punching and kicking the shark with her free arm and leg. She felt its rough skin and hard scales. She felt its cold eyes staring at her. She screamed for help, hoping someone would hear her. Someone did. Greg Jordan was a surfer, riding the waves near the shore. He had seen Natalie swimming out to sea and had admired her courage and enthusiasm. He had also noticed the shark's fin cutting through the water, heading towards her. He knew he had to act fast. He grabbed his surfboard and paddled towards her as fast as he could. He saw her struggling with the shark, blood staining the water around her. He saw her face, twisted in agony and terror. He reached her and threw his board at the shark, hitting it on the nose. The shark let go of Natalie as it recoiled in pain. Greg grabbed Natalie and lifted her onto his board. He saw the extent of her injury and felt sick. Despite the panic and adrenaline rushing through his veins, Greg knew he had to remain calm and get Natalie to safety immediately. He paddled back towards the shore as fast as he could, shouting for help as he did so. Lifeguards and other beachgoers heard his cries and rushed to assist. Upon reaching the shallower waters, Greg, with the help of others, carried Natalie to the beach. Nick and Allie were hysterical when they saw what happened to their daughter. Despite the commotion, the lifeguards quickly attended to her injuries, applying pressure to the wound to control the bleeding while they waited for an ambulance. Natalie was in excruciating pain, but she remained conscious and aware of the severity of her situation. She looked up at her parents, tears in her eyes. The lifeguards and her parents assured her that everything would be all right. The lifeguards created a makeshift stretcher and carefully transported Natalie off the beach and into the ambulance. They worked efficiently, keeping her as stable as possible to minimize the risk of further complications. Natalie's condition stabilized during the five-hour operation. Her leg was amputated, but she fully recovered after a few weeks in the hospital. As Natalie emerged victorious from her harrowing ordeal, her story stood as a cautionary tale, a powerful reminder of the ocean's beauty and unforgiving nature, a testament to the importance of respecting its depths and embracing the wisdom of the waters.